Well, this is old Kim. And this is not a spring chicken. Today we're going to be talking about... Actually, we're going to do our annual history of Christmas, except in a totally different way, because we're going to tell you a little bit about Christmas, and most of the time it's going to be talked about the origins of Santa Claus. Ah. You know, I got 13 pages on the origins of Santa Claus this year, folks. So. How <laughs> I do pull up his research. So I do my research. He did the research. Uh, I know, but it's neat. You know, I, 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 okay. What I did was I got a whole bunch of information that we have never used before on Christmas, which makes it a little bit neater because it's it's just like what happens is we're getting revisionist history anymore. So, but is that what you think is going on? I think so. Okay, I, I guarantee you, I left out. Okay, there's this much on the history of Christmas, and there is this much on the opposition to Christmas now. Oh, really? It used to be. Mainly on Christmas. Oh, I know. Not much opposition. No, there's more opposition to Christmas material than there is uh, Christmas material now. And I, I would not have believed that, too. And there was a whole army about Bill Recrout, you know, the outrage uh, about the destruction of Christmas. I did hear one of the people say that if this was a Muslim holiday, you know, with, with a Muslim dressed as St. Nicholas, it would be a perfect they, it would be perfectly acceptable, but if not, because it's a Christian. Oh, because it's a Christian religion? I yeah. know. What did politically correct mean you have to do Muslim slanted? I know. Well, because the Muslim... Well, it's not even Jewish slanted, which would be Hanukkah. I know. A Christian, not a nomination. It's... And, and, and you tell people, Muslims do have holidays. They, they do. Actually, they actually do have holidays, which basically do get the shaft from the news media, and the news media is to the left. I know. Why is that? I have no idea. I mean, um, I have because because we live in a we supposedly live in a Christian society. Well, yeah, you know, which the, is probably why they focus on it. But they don't talk about Kwanzaa. I know. We live in a homogenous society, which basically means all religions are accepted in our country, which is why we exist. You know, no religion is dominant. You know, although some people, I don't think you're going to get a Mormon president anytime soon. No. No, you know. So but they're probably not because he's a Mormon, just because they don't like the guy. My guess if Barack Obama had been a Mormon, they would have elected him. Pure and simple. Instead, they elected a Muslim to refuse to admit he's a Muslim. Mm. But uh, okay, so we'll get down to the history of Christmas right now, well, we're, we're, and then Sam. We don't do things like other people. The word Christmas comes from Christmas masses, an English phrase that means Mass of Christ. Christ Mass. Yeah. Christmas. I know. That makes sense. Basically, uh, what it was in the history of Christmas dates back over 4,000 years. Isn't that something? That Christmas tradition was celebrated before Christ child was born. So it's the 12 days of Christmas, folks. Mm -hmm. The bright fire, the Yule log, the giving of gifts, carnivals, praise of floats, carolers, the singing while going from house to house, the holiday feast, the church, all can be traced back to the early Mesopotamians. And guess what part of the world that is, folks? Where? It's the Muslim world. Yeah, they weren't Muslims at that time, but they were Arabs. That's what I mean. A lot of what is can be owed to the old Arab world. And people don't seem to understand And they were all brothers and sisters over there. Oh, everybody's right? relatives. I, mean, I know, they're all relatives, folks. I mean, I think so. Uh, I know. I bet the three wise men came from there. Yeah, but I mean, probably. The three wise men were Muslims. They were, uh, uh, yeah, they were, they were, they were Muslim, uh, Arab, yeah, they were Muslim mm -hmm. at that time, but they were like Arabs, they were Muslim, but uh, many, many of the traditions began with the Mesopotamian celebration of New Year's. The Mesopotamians believed in many gods, and as their chief god, Marduk, each year as winter arrived to believe that Marduk would do battle with the monsters of chaos. To assist Marduk in his struggle, the Mesopotamians held a festival in the New Year. This was Zagmuk. The year's new festival that lasted for 12 days. The, the 12 days of Christmas. Mm -hmm. da, 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 yeah, but they didn't da, 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 call it Christmas da, 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 back da, da, da. there. No, well, Christ hadn't been born yet. That's right. Christ, mm -hmm. did Christmas, Christ Mass. So, mm -hmm. Basically, it's a stupid holiday to make money. It always has been. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. You, you, okay, Jews were all about making money. There we go. The Mesopotamian king would return to the temple of Maduk and swear as faithless to the god. The traditions call for the king to die at the end of the year and return with Maduk to bow. I don't think the king died. I was going to say, I don't think he would. Okay. Uh, too, uh, good. Now we, we saw... Uh, 
to, to spare their king, just in case it didn't really happen like they thought it would. He wasn't prepared to die for their holiday. <laughs> they used a mock king. <laughs> Isn't that like saying you didn't believe in what they're doing? Mm -hmm. Okay. No, they believe it, but they don't believe it enough to die for it. Yeah. Sort of so, like a Democrat today in our country, so. <laughs> so the mock king, of course, was chosen and dressed in royal clothes. Can you believe that? He was given all the respects and privileges of a king. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And at the end of it, he was the, the well, at the end, the celebrated mock king was stripped of the royal clothes and slain, sparing the life of the real king. Mm. It sounds like it was all in celebration. Yeah, they, sacrificial. It's like they sacrificed a king. To them. <laughs> yeah, that, that did a lot of blood sacrificing in that part of the world. That's why they think that maybe mm -hmm. the people in South America just might be really close related. You know, since they built pyramids, mm -hmm. they might be really closely related to those people over there. And they got on a boat. They did sell around the world, folks. Mm -hmm. Thor Heyerdahl showed you. So the Persians and the Babylonians celebrated a similar fest festival called the Sedkia. Part of that celebration included the exchange of places. The slaves would become the masters, and the masters were to obey. Somehow, that last part... Yeah. I... Mm -hmm. Okay, how many of the masters... Okay, how many of the kings would trade places with their servants? Uh, okay, we're going to try to give you a simple, uh, a, a simple thing in somatics, Mesopotamian masochist. Mesopotamian masochist. Well, what does that have to do? Masochist. What is a masochist? Oh, s &M. Yeah. They like to be whipped a lot. Uh, so that was the exchange and, of and places. And treated like doggies and stuff. Yeah, that's where the word comes from. See, See this we have never shared before because this is actually brand new to me. And remember, she grew up in a nunnery. She really did. Okay, so anyway, early Europeans believed in evil spirits, witches, ghosts, and trolls. Well, does yeah. that have a lot to do? That's okay, and uh, fables, Scrooge, and all of the uh, Dickens. As the winter solstice approached with its long cold nights and short days, um, people feared that the sun would not return. Yeah. So they did all these special rituals to bring to welcome back the sun. Well, the sun was coming back anyway. But they, but, they, but they didn't have their calendar. Okay, they, so they okay. Didn't know. put it this way. The, okay, you, um, as was it is today, you have the educated class and you have the non-educated class. The educated people knew that the sun rose from one direction and sun and, and, and also knew when they were to do this and knew when they were. They couldn't collect taxes if they didn't know what the growing seasons were, folks. Mm -hmm. They were, you know, but that's why they were in their castles on high. And so, so the other people that were not educated, what they they panicked and they did all these rituals. Thinking, yeah. Yeah. They got, right got, now, we just call it a reason to celebrate. I know. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Look, in Scandinavia during the winter months, the sun would disappear for many days. It's probably because Scandinavia is so far north. After 35 days, scouts would be sent to look for the return of the sun. And the first light was seen, scouts would return with the good news. A great festival will be held called Yuletide. Yes. Isn't that amazing? And a special feast would be served around a fire burning with the Yule log. Great bonfires would also be lit to celebrate the return of the sun. In some areas, people would tie apples to trees, branches, to remind themselves that spring and summer would return. Does that sound a bit like a Yule tree? Mm -hmm. Gee, I like this one. I, 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 did, I put this one together last night. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can guarantee you that the chair dog doesn't think I work, but I really do the research. Mm -hmm. um, let see, the ancient Greeks held a festival similar to that to the See, these don't even yeah. sound like Christmas. These all sound God. like you know, but, winter celebrations. I know, but where do you think that, but doesn't it all start, we've got the 12 days, we have Yule, and uh... Okay, that's how the Yule season, how they all come mm -hmm. wrapped we're up We're giving together. you, we're wrapping this all up in a pretty package this year. I like this one, we could do something. You could actually uh, make a, uh, a document, a little film mm -hmm. short cartoon about how this happened, folks. And the ancient Greeks held a festival similar to that of the Zagmukasakeia festivals to assist their god, Kronos, Kronos, who would battle the god Zeus and his titans. That sounds like it came right from Greek mythology. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then here comes the next one, which is a good one. Why? 
The Romans celebrated their god Saturn. Their festival was called Saturnalia, which began in the middle of December. Let's say about 12 days before the 25th. Ah. Yeah. And uh, it ended the 1st of January, which is when we really start stop celebrating because of the difference in the, the, the okay, the, uh, the Greek Orthodox hangs over end of the 1st of January. I just think of it's a reason to hold a winter's party. Uh, when cries of <laughs> jealous Saturnalia, the celebration would include mass graves in the street, big festival meals, visiting friends, and the exchange of good good luck gifts called Serenia, which is lucky fruits. Hey, does that sound like exchanging gifts the 12 days of Christmas? It I does, do it really does. Me. So the Romans decked their halls with garlands of laurel and green trees lit with candles. Again, the masters and the slaves would exchange places. Christmas tree, folks. Oh. And decorations on your house. Oh, how they said, again, the masters and slaves would be, yeah. <laughs> because, well, okay, they really like to jump slaves in Rome, though. So, uh, remember, um, I think um, uh, one of the kings, uh, Cal uh, was it Caligula, Calig no, Claudia, who was the uncle of Caligula and Nero, basically, I think he married a slave or something, so. I think also, I think Caligula is about to slave too, so. They all probably did. But, yo, Saturnalia was a fun and festive time for Romans, but the Christmas thought is an abomination to honor the pagan god. They wanted to keep to keep the birthday of the child Christ a solemn religious holiday, not one of cheer and merriment. Yeah, <laughs> who makes the money off of that, folks? You ever seen a, a, a Jewish family at Christmas time? You know, okay, mm -hmm. this is five. Okay, this is gonna cost you five dollars. This will cost you ten dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, this one you create a fruitcake. Mm -hmm. But, um, but as Christians spread, mm -hmm. they were alarmed at the continuing celebration of pagan customs and Saturn mainly among their converts. At first, the church forbid this kind of celebration, but it was to no avail. Eventually, it was decided that celebration would be tamed and made into a celebration fit for the Christian Son of God. Anybody remember Constantine? The great, the guy that brought Christianity to what people did he bring Christianity to? So who? The Romans. So basically, they're having all these celebrations, and they weren't making anything off of it. Yeah, and they weren't going to end the celebration, so we, they decided to wrap something else around it and make money off of it. Mm -hmm. Half of my family mm -hmm. are Jews. Mm -hmm. We are we are really Hebrew Jews, so we can speak that. I can mm -hmm. speak all those languages, but. Um, um, some legends claim that the Christian Christmas, Christian Christmas celebration, three C's in a row, was invented to compete That's against the pagan celebrations. The 25th was not only scarce the Romans, but also the Persians, whose religion, Myarthism, was uh, one of Christian's main rivals at the time. The church eventually was successful in taking the merriment lights and gifts from the Saturnian festival and bringing them to the celebration of Christ. For Christ, okay, we're going to say for, for Christ's Christ sake. sake. I knew you were going to say for that. For Christ's sake, Constantine the Great brought the Christian religion to the Roman people. So what do you think is going to, you think they're going to go take the Persian one if Constantine is a Roman emperor? Okay, now that makes more so, sense. Mm -hmm. I know. Nobody actually this is the fun part, which basically no one. Oh, now this one people are not going to be happy about. Where did you get, get this one? It's the exact day of the Christ child's birth has never been pinpointed, although I'm sure there's many scholars that would have lots of disagreement with that. Yeah, but uh, yeah. It, 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 you know, the, uh, celebrated since 98 AD, celebrated after Dominion, after the death they find it, they pick a date. Well. You know, you don't. It was B.C. before Christ. That's what yeah. B.C. was, right? A.D. was after he died. Wait, so no. after, A.D. is yeah. After he's died, everyone that knew when he was, when he died is dead, and the records were basically stricken from most of the books. So, uh, in 137 A.D., the Bishop of Rome ordered the birthday of the Christ Child celebrated as a solemn feast. In 350 A.D., another bishop of Rome, Julius I, chose December 25th in the observance of Christmas because the 12 days of Christmas, remember they're celebrating, Saturnalia was basically celebrated in the middle of the month for like 12 days, and if you count backwards, ah. yeah, to when they start the celebration. Look, they start on the 12th or the 13th, which is... 12 days. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? I'm giving you... They say, well, how the, why the hell did somebody else? Because I actually do my research, folks. 
I have a, I, 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 one of my big things is I'm a good researcher, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, let me see, here we go. Uh, the, uh, okay, by, uh, in late, okay, okay, in the late 1300s, the Christian was an official religion of the Roman Empire. By 1100, Christ was kind of the most important religious festival in Europe, and St. Nicholas was a symbol of giving gifts to many European countries. That's why he became a saint. During the 1400-1500, many artists painted scenes in the nativity, the birth of Jesus, the example of work, uh, and the Jesus Christ uh, print uh, in the World Encyclopedia. So, there we go. Mm -hmm. there we go. So, the popularity of Christmas grew until the Reformation, which is a religious movement in the 1500s. Oh. And that's the birth get, that gave, well, that's the movement that gave birth to... Uh, Protestantism. Protest, pro, I know, why don't you say Protestants? Oh, well, she's from a Catholic nunnery. <laughs> Sounds like a tongue twister. Yeah. And during the Reformation, many Christians began to consider Christmas a pagan celebration because it included non-religious celebrations or customs. Oh, that was interesting. Yeah. They wrapped it around, the, because they were, they were, they had to do with the harvest. Yeah. Right? During the 1600, because of these feelings, Christmas was outlawed in England and in parts of the English colonies in America. The old customs of feasting and decorating, however, soon reappeared and blended with the more Christian aspects of the celebration because it's got to do with making a buck. It's all it's got all to do with making is a buck. Is it all that simple? It's that simple. Everything has got to do with sex and making money. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, the, most of the, okay. It, 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 okay, the other people wanted to have sex, and the Jewish people wanted to make money. So, oh, is that what it was? That's what it was. So, okay. now we we go to the second part. Well, that was that why it was eat, drink, and be merry. Yeah, well, because it started out as a pagan holiday. If you look at if you look carefully, where I dug up all the pieces, we have the we have the we have the decorations of your house, the light putting of stuff on the tree. We have the Yule celebration. We have the Yule tree. We have. Uh, we have the 12 days of Christmas. We've got the birth just happening to coincide with the 12 yeah. days of the holidays. See, so. that, this reminds me of like now, it's like they give them a symbolic reason as to why they do it. Yeah. Now people do it just because, because. they like it. 